Hey, down here, Michael J. So, uh, my friend Rebel, Rebel who is the uh, very famous commander influencer, uh, is trying to get better at Magic the Gathering, and uh, she's preparing for a modern RCQ in the next week or so. So, um, what I decided to do was uh, watch some of her games. Uh, she's considered playing um, Burn, which is uh, obviously a deck that I like to play in Modern. And uh, she asked me to critique some of her play and maybe come up with things that might be helpful uh, in the future. So I don't know if I'm going to like become a famous magic coach or anything, but uh, let's see how this goes. Maybe you'll like the coaching that I do, uh, and we'll see if uh, I'm helpful to Rebel. We're on the play. That is great. Okay, let's not keep yet. Let's decide. We have turn one spike. We can also bolt something. And then uh, everything is two mana, which is great. We could turn two, Searing Blaze a creature, deal three. And then Boros Charm is good. So I should be counting damage, I guess. Right? Is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Three seven, ten, um, just for a spike, charm, blaze, then we have 16 damage, uh, including helix, bull, uh, if we draw a land, and if they fetch incorrectly or fetch and lose life, I think it's lethal, so I think this is pretty good. Um, yeah, and we also have some big canyon to draw a card. Since we're on the play, I think we just spike them first, right? Or, hot take, maybe we canyon pass Bolt and see what they do. They know we're going to be on burn regardless. And if the plan is to blaze their creature, I don't think it makes sense to leave mana open to Bolt them. Or, yeah, so I think it's just Spike. I'm going to pause here uh, and just do some quick comments. Uh, this hand sucks. Uh, it doesn't suck enough to mulligan in the dark, but it is terrible. Uh, it can do... This is a classic, like, burn did 17 points of damage, not 20 points of damage hand. Uh, and this hand does 16 points of damage if everything goes right. Um, like, i.e. the opponent is playing a creature directly into your Searing Blaze on turn 2. It doesn't have enough land to... Uh, kind of meet out a Searing Blaze later, but it does 16 points of damage between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cards, Boros Charm dealing uh, dealing 4 rather than 3, and 8 damage to you! So this hand stinks. Um, and the opponent really has to cooperate for the hand to be any good. Uh, again, I don't know if it's bad enough to mulligan, but I would not lava spike on the first turn. Uh, I care less about the optionality of Lightning Bolt and more about just not casting Lava Spike. So Lava Spike on the first turn is generally not a winning play in Burn. Um, you need to have a very specific hand for it to be good, so I call that a Gear 1 hand where Burn plays as kind of a combo deck. This is not a combo deck hand. Uh, it is going to cast one spell per turn after turn two. Uh, the Searing Blaze might have zero context, um, this is just not a great hand, and it is in, par in, in particular a poor first turn Lava Spike hand. So, there's a famous story of Roman Fusco, my Ancestor Recall podcast partner, casting a first turn Lava Spike while I walked by to watch him do it when we were playing in day two of a Star City Open. Uh, and he says as soon as he did it, he knew his opponent was Grixis Death Shadow, and his opponent was obviously Grixis Death Shadow. All he accomplished was giving uh, his opponent's creatures a permanent giant growth. The reason that you don't Lava Spike on the first turn... Oh, there's actually multiple reasons, but one of them is that you always have time to Lava Spike. Uh, this hand, again, is just a bunch of two casting cost cards, so you're just going to have time to cast Lava Spike with the, the current complexion of this hand. Uh, and also, it becomes very valuable later in the game for kind of critical mass turns where you're either kind of stacking a bunch of burn cards together for Monastery Swiss Spear or to enable Spectacle... Um, again, I don't think I would mulligan this hand in the dark, but I absolutely would not cast Lava Spike in the dark here. All right, so Rebel's got the opponent uh, down 17, 19. Again, this hand deals 16 to the opponent and 8 to you. So, it's just, this is a dismal hand. Not bad enough to mulligan, though. All right, opponent uh, plays 
breeding pool tapped. If they're Un the land? Unclear what they cool. are. Oh, this changes things. Um, hmm. I think that you just get in with guide here. I, I think I would not so play the Sunbaked Canyon. I kind of want to hold. And waves. I would attack with guide. To see what they do and just guide them. Because um, that puts two points of damage. Any other choice we take puts not that much more. And getting died out sooner is good. All right, so I believe that puts the opponent to 15. Prairie. Prairie stream. Oh, this is 4C. This is on that. So reveal. Prairie so the opponent stream. gets to draw an extra so card. In that case. Two in. Just don't play the land. Oh. Oh, Solitude. Yeah, All right, so we got a card back. Now. Sucks. Get rid of stuff. It's fine. Just. Uh, in that case, does Bolt ever matter? Well, Bolt's going to matter. Might, if they're trying to... Uh, if they're trying to Blood Parade Elf, but then we still have this. So regardless, I think I just play the canyon now. Yeah, you don't play the canyon. So the reason you don't play the canyon is, you're, what, are you going to catch your lightning bolt this turn? Which probably not going to. not going to hit there. So like, you're just so turning off your searing plays. I think we're going to draw land. Also, like, you might seem like your mana screwed, so the opponent might play differently. Yeah, they're just like really just going to bolt here. It's bad to bolt here. Bolt so... You're dealing three points of damage to your opponent if you're lucky, and you deal one point of damage to yourself. Um, like, again, you could have just not played the second Sunbaked Canyon. Uh, I think the right play here is to float a Rift Bolt. I guess so the world is a little different if you still have a Lightning Bolt in hand. Um, and deal three damage next turn, or deal four now. Uh, and then suspend... I think suspending makes the most amount of sense. In my universe, we would float the Rift Bolt here because we still have the Sunbaked Canyon in hand. I think given the fact that Rebel has played the Sunbaked Canyon, it is actually better to resolve the Boros Charm. So the Boros Charm would actually resolve in this situation, so you should just cast they it. They could. Sharding Agent into a prayer, like a thing, but we don't care about Yeah, so agent. imagine they have a Shardless Agent, so which is what Rebel is debating about right now it's just infinitely better to have the searing blaze uh deal three uh which would require having the sunbake tannin in hand given the current complexion of hand i think if we were playing towards land drawing a land next turn then yeah, the opponent does so nothing they can't afford deal to. three probably okay remove the counter and then Opponent on 11. This is going to be a challenging game to win. Rebel only drew one creature, okay. and um, right now the Searing Blaze is looking like a mulligan. Um, ugh. I'm going to hold the Blaze for next turn and just pass. Yeah, I think I think I would have played Mountain uh, in this situation uh, so I could sacrifice one of my Sunbaked Canyons. Charm, put them down to uh, put them down to seven. That's pretty seven, interesting. So, three. all right, okay. So that's gonna put really them to ten. With worst case scenario, they have Omnath here. They could play Omnath here, which is kind of bad. Uh oh. No, Omnath is just a four-four yeah, chunker. All right, so you have six points of damage in hand. Um. Ugh. I think you're gonna have to double spell the Omnath, Five, but at least six, you have seven. a land for the Searing Blaze. Four. Five, six. I mean they're gonna draw regardless. We don't you don't get to pick. Right? So I think you just charm the head. It's a bunch of ways to win on the next turn, given how the game's gone. Uh, but charm the head for sure. Uh, notably, Robo would have had time to cast right. the Lava, Lava Spike. spike Lightning Bolt. Lava Spike. That's not it. All right, this is going to become awkward. Um, Omnath gaining life. 
That's tough. I think I would just land Blaze Omnath non lethally, put the opponent to three. And then there you have a lot of draws. You have like one casting cost burn spells or a fourth land could potentially win the game from this spot. Crack land go to nine. Next turn. Uh, if they play a land, go to 10. Crack a land, go to 9. Gain 4, go back to 13. Um, and our hand currently does 9 damage. So... Um, yeah, I mean, this, this hand just wasn't very good. It's really hard. Um, that's really annoying. What's she, what's she thinking about here? Our hand deals nine. Um, they're at heal extend. They go back to ten, and then I think you just blaze them down to blaze them down to three and see what happens. Or you have like a again. You could just draw fourth land and uh, get them. Also with a why are you not playing a land? All right. Oh well, Strand is gonna probably pull this game out of out of ability to win. Uh, you just lost context on the Searing Blaze, though. Helix. Yeah. Yep. Upkeep, gain a bunch of life. So, I think at this point, okay, I so would just we kill can Omnath. Blaze this and skewer it, which puts them down to uh, like nine points of burn life. against ten life and. Like another Omnath activation is just too much. All right, hold on. You just ten. Seer and skewer. Don't look back. I can blaze. Put them down to seven. Skewer. If they have another Omnath, we're kind of screwed. Um, How much you can do about it? Let them gain four. Go to fourteen. No, you can't let them gain. Helix them. Go back to eleven. Then no, that doesn't make any so sense. you can't let them gain because they could just keep we gaining never beat and on they have like a recurring source of both clock to. and life gain. So uh, it sucks, anyway. but you just gotta overkill this. Right, this will put them down to seven, and then you skewer them. You have a lot of pulls, right? I mean, they have six cards in hand. I think like you just can't have an expectation that they're gonna spectacle. not have uh, an answer or a continued stream of lands force of negation force of negation that's probably game yeah uh, that's game Yeah, the game was really hard to win. One I think draw away. I think because Omnath is so crucial in this matchup, Path Matter is rolling, Vortex is very good. Uh they might bring in Leyline. Oh also my god. I would just never have Wear Tear in my deck. Uh Patrick Sullivan once said to me that he would rather never win a game have a than lot to of have Wear Tear. Well, also, what does Adalon do in this game? Um, mana three or less. I think they're going to be playing... Everything is like five or more. The only thing that matters is the sharding agent. And the beans. Uh, so if you're going to bring in cards. seven cards, yeah, I think that the clear cut is Searing Blaze. It's actually pretty good against Solitude, but it's just... I mean, it's like a second order answer. 
Oh, I keep Eidolon. Uh, but I, I just wouldn't bring in Wear Tear. It sucks. I could just really just rather lose. So you don't know if they're going to have it. They have to have it in their opening mm -hmm. hand. It's a bunch of garbage. I think Swiss Beer is kind of good. I guess Swiss Beer is great, especially when... You can't take out Guide? What are you doing? With all the Fury. All right. Like, you're just not... That's not a good game plan. Um, they have really good answers in the form of Solitude, etc. Okay, so Rebel drew two Wear Tears... This destroys uh, their beans. This is like this, a double mulligan. Turn one rift bolt. Turn two destroy thing. Like this hand destroy. can deal six points of damage and is a double mulligan. What are they keeping? It is. I mean, we do also. I mean, like firecraft. It's impossible to assess because her sideboarding strategy was off by siding sure. in rare tier to begin Tell with. Um, the reason that you don't want to play cards like rare tier is they don't deal any damage. You're playing against an opponent who has well, outstanding say, uh, free answers. Oh, no ley line. And, like, you just literally double mulliganed. Just horrible. Like, I just don't know what destiny that wear tear has now. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove the suspense. I mean, like, I guess you play this. It's, it's just not good. I'm sorry if it's not good. It's not a very yeah, descriptive element of coaching uh three face sure uh path i think when I mean, you play sacred foundry i think you could play it tapped we're just gonna helix face just time to cast it look at the look at your hand it's just time to cast helix Uh, one of the things that we should just keep in mind is whether Helix or Skullcrack would be better in any given situation. Um, a lot of people play Skullcrack, which I think is like an unplayable card, and they don't play oh, Helix, which is very good. Uh, I don't think I would have just cast that Helix there. Like, this hand just can't deal 20 damage. Um, okay, they can't cast Omnath this turn, so you're not under, like, Omnath pressure. Uh, I think that... Given the hand, I would just execute Firecraft face based on how Rebels played this game so far, which would free us up next turn into sacrificing Sunbaked Canyon. Right, like, like, right, like, like, what are you gonna do? Like, that Firecraft's destiny is to deal four, right? Like, if you're gonna guarantee four, might as well just cast. It. Yeah. Um, sure. you know, good against Rift Bolt, I guess. Uh, like that card's generally pretty bad against burn. Um, so like this play doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, uh, swift spear. Spiky. This is not going to make a lot of sense to you, dear listener, podcast lover, or whatever. But I think I would have just killed to fairy this turn. Um, so like. Getting the opponent down to seven is like pretty illusory. They have like an answer to Monastery Swiss Beer, and they're gonna be able to do some nonsense to Rebel. Yeah, I mean like they just drew an extra card. Like you could have traded a could have traded a lava spike for that to ferry. It's been pretty good. Swiss beer, pad, slap. Like, it's just puts them down to five, play a land, if I can get another point of damage through. How do you get them to five with this board? Firecraft, that's an uncountable. We can't even cast the Firecraft. You only have two land. Uh, I think with two more cards in hand, Rebel would have been in a way better situation. Just wear tear is just not a playable card. Yep, they need that hot math. Oh, Firewalker. That works. Uh, I feel like the play here is Swift Spear... Oh. Pad the Exile, okay, Firewalker, Attack to Fairy. Uh, the negation is still just one, so... Maybe they have five cards in hand, but like they should have less cards in hand Right. on if account of to Fairy should one. be dead, and Swift Spear should still be in play, attacking. It's supposed to be a two power, they go to six, hit them. Um, yeah. 
I'm just going to cast that now. Why would you not play the Swift Spear first? Get a land here. Uh, this is... This is not right. Right? Like, so now you're going to have a one power Swift Spear? Just attack for... Okay. What situation is this better? Okay, they're at four. That's pretty good. If you rip a land, you can firecraft them. This is just a good example if Red Bull had played the firecraft on turn three uh, rather than sacrificing the land. Um, she would be in exactly the same position, uh, except for they would have four fewer life, which means that they would be dead. Um. Time warp. Okay. Rock and roll, right? Time warp. We don't have on that. That's exciting. Who keeps a five drop in against red beatdown? This crazy opponent, apparently. Marco Balaka95. Now they drew on that? The anticipation. Yep, Omnath. Um, just oh. weird tear is really bad. Don't play it. Uh, and it just doesn't deal any damage. Uh, and uh, ugh. So it puts them to infinity life. Um, they're gonna have to fairy back. This is so bad. Um, I guess Rebel can. Path the Omnath, hope that resolves. That's good. Still counts. Uh. Okay, it's gonna resolve. That's gonna no give Swift Spear him. two power. Um we bolt them, put them at six. If you bolt them, put them at five. Okay, Leyline Binding. binding sure. Ugh, That's barf. Uh, you might as well just Lightning Bolt here. Oh, oh wait, no! I should have told Oh, you should. It. That stupid Wear Tear could actually have gotten damage in this oh, turn. Oh, I can't. There's a Teferi. Yeah, of course you can. In that case, I think we still just tear this now. Well, why would you tear this now? You just bolt, put them at five. Next turn, you could tear and uh, attack. Because you're past attacks now, right? The fact that Wear Tear bounced or got rid of Leyland Binding does not make it good enough to play. It could have just been a three damage spell. Time warp again. <laughs> Lorian revealed. Island cycling, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Opponent has nine lands to rebels two. The likelihood of uh this turning out good for the good guys is zero. Again, I would have just killed that Teferi uh, eons ago. The Teferi's drawn multiple extra cards and kept Swift Spear off the battlefield. Um, it's unclear what life the opponent would be at because of the three damage they would have gotten back from Lava Spike, but how much more damage would they have taken from Swift Spear? Who, who's to say? Bring to light. I wonder if this is an Omnath. Um, and then, ooh, Core Firewalker. Nice. Uh, plus the opponent has um, Boros Charm. Like this game is pretty untenable. Three cards in hand. Why would they get Core Firewalker? Instead of or five. Um. Five. So I think um, 
Core Firewalker pulled by the opponent's pretty bad there, provided they have additional Omnaths in their deck. Rebel is down two Path to Exiles oh already, uh, which is probably all the Path to Exiles so that to the average burn deck is going to exactly draw. Exactly what? Um, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we need that third land. So bad. This is not possible to win anymore with the current situation. Charm is three. Bolt is two. Firecraft is three, six. That's eight. They're at eight life. Gain like one point of life. Um, game is out. Yeah, I'm just gonna borrow Charm. Yep. So I just don't actually think that Teferi is very good in this matchup, but it is restricting Rebel from doing timing tricks on on her burn spells. Subtlety. Sure. How subtle. All right, so that is five turn clock. Five. Yeah, so five, five, five. It's a five turn clock if Rebel doesn't deal any more damage to herself. That's it's, uh, it's all over with the crying. Uh, if I'm the opponent, I bounce subtlety here. Right? So get in for another five and then now bounce subtlety. Why didn't they bounce subtlety? You can just recast it if you need to. That works. It does not work. Rift Bolt against Teferi Time Reveler is not the matchup you want. That 100% does not oh, work. Oh no, it's Teferi. Yeah. So. Um. That'll put them to three. Teferi's going to counter Rift Bolt. We have three cards in hand. I, I think this game should have been a win. There's just like a, a lot of errors. Three, four, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, game one, I think, was a tough time. Rebel's six. hand sucked. Yeah. Opponent had Solitude for... Her only creature, and um, oh, but like game two, I think I certainly would have won, um, even with similar draw. Uh, I would not have sided in Wear Terror, nor do I think Wear Terror belongs in the deck. That is the first video. Love Mike. <laughs>